Okay, so in this video, we're going to learn how to simplify expressions that involves rational exponents. So we're going to introduce the idea of radicals. So if you, for instance, if you have, say, radical x as an exponent, you would write that as x to the one half power. Similarly, if you have a cube root of x, you would simply write that as x to the one third power. So in general, we can say that if you have an nth root of x, where n is a positive um, integer greater than one, that will simply be x to the power one over n. Now, what if this power is not one anymore? What if it's a it's number other than one? How would you write it? Let's call it some m. So modifying that, if you have an nth root of x to the m power, that can also be written as nth root of x to the m power, like that. So the m can be pulled out from the radical symbol. And then in exponential form, you'll write this as x to the power m over n. So that's the rule we're going to be using along with the laws of exponents to simplify a few examples on exponents that are rational, because now you're not just talking about integers, you're talking about fractional power. So let's go ahead and talk about our first example. Okay, so let's take a look at these two examples. So for the first one, we want to find the square root of 625. So pretty much you look for a number, let's call it an x, when you square it, you get 625. So that's pretty much how you would think of when you see a square root or cube root or any other rational power. So in this case, you just go down the list, um, one times one, two times two, and so forth. And eventually you'll see that 25 times 25 will give you 625. So that means a square root of 625 will simply be 25 because 25 squared is 625. So that will be the answer to the first one. For the second one, now we want to find the fourth root of 1 over 625. So a little bit different from the previous one, but we can still manage to do it. So I'm going to go ahead and separate the radicals. So this is a fourth root of 1 over fourth root of 625. Well, now we know what fourth root of 1 is. Pretty much a number multiplying itself four times to give you 1. That will simply be 1. Now for 625, well, you again go down the list and see what number, let's call it x, four times, I'm um, sorry, to the fourth power to give you 625. So if you just pick numbers randomly and multiply them itself four times to give you 625. So you might want to start off like three times, three times three, or four times, four times, four times four, if you're not familiar with the perfect ones. So, um, I would say five should do because this number ends with five. So if I do five times, five times, five times five, do I get 625? Well, this is 25 and this is 25. So that is actually 625. So the answer to the fourth root of 625 is five. So overall, the answer would be one over five. Okay, uh, now let's go ahead and do a couple more examples. All right, so now let's take a look at these two. Now we have negative 64 to the power one third. Now, if you want, you can rewrite it in radical form. So this will simply be the cube root of negative 64. And then we try to ask ourselves what number multiplying itself three times to give us negative 64. Again, if you're not familiar with what these numbers are, just go down the list. You start with one, and one will always give you one, so you don't have to start with one. But let's just say uh, one is a nice number. And then you go down to two, two times two times two. If that gives you negative 64 or not, you'll just modify with the negative sign. And then we can just go down to um, negative three. So negative three, negative three, negative three. And then let's go to negative four negative four, negative four. So you see that negative four will work because this would be positive 16 
and then times a negative four, that would give you a negative 64. Check, that's what we want. So that means the um, cube root of negative 64 is going to be negative four because negative four times negative four times negative four would give you negative 64. So the cube root of that would be a negative four. All right, so now let's take a look at the next one. Now, next one, you wanna simplify the exponent before you start looking for the number multiplying itself this many times to give you that number. So I'm gonna rewrite this portion as an exponential form and then simplify using the laws of exponents. So we have uh, two to the power one fifth to the power negative 10. That's how you would rewrite it. And then from laws of exponents, we know if, if something raised to an exponent, we multiply their exponents. So this will simply be just two to the power negative 10 over five, because one fifth times negative 10 is negative 10 over five. And then simply that would just become two to the negative two, because negative 10 divided by five would give you two. And now again, laws of exponent tell us we know how to make this positive, simply it's a positive power, simply write this as over one and then reciprocate the fraction. So this would be one over two to the positive two. And evaluate now, that's one over four. So that's how you would use the ideas of both radicals and exponents together to simplify your final result. All right, now let's take a look at a couple more examples. Now let's take a look at these two. So for the first one here, again, we're going to use the laws of exponents to distribute. Just keep in mind you're distributing a fractional exponent. So if we do that, we have eight to the power of negative two third. So let me just rewrite that, it looks weird. Negative two third times, now y to the third also gets a power of negative two third. And then the laws of exponents tell us we multiply the exponents in this case. So, and then for the eight to the negative two third, I will make it a positive exponent. So why don't I go ahead and write all of this over a fraction? So now I wanna make them positive. So I have one over now eight to the power of positive two third. And the y, I can also make the exponent positive and I can distribute at the same time. So three times two third, that will be six over three, which will simply be two. So this is really um, y to the second power on the bottom. And then now eight to the two third, well, you can write it as a radical form. So that will simply be the cube root of eight square. And then we still have y square over there. Well, now what's a cube root of eight? Well, we know that's two. So this is simply just one over two square times y square. And then we know what two square is, so that will be four y square. So that's how you would simplify something like this, which looks a little bit more complicated, but again, breaking it down into single steps, you can always get to the final answer easily. For the next problem, we will do something similar, but here uh, we just have base seven raised to different powers. So. On top, we have seven to the two third. On the bottom, we have seven to the five third. Well, laws of exponents says, if you have same base, if you're dividing, you subtract their exponents. We do the same thing with integers. So we'll do the same thing with fractions, just making sure they have same denominators. So using the laws of exponent, this is simply seven to the power of two third minus five third, because we subtract the exponents. Now they do have same denominators, two third and five third, their denominators are three. So we can go ahead and simply do the subtraction. So we have seven to the power two minus five, that's negative three. And on the bottom, we still have three. So that will simply become just seven to the negative one power. Now, simply to make this a positive power, we reciprocate. So that will be one over seven to the positive one, or just simply seven is fine. So that will be the final simplification for this problem. Now let's take a look at our last examples. So, so for these last two examples, um, we're going to do the same thing again. So uh, it just looks different, right? <laughs> uh, so for, for the first one, we're gonna go ahead and distribute the exponents. 
So we have u to the fifth power to the power negative one third times b to the sixth power to the power negative one third. And now you can distribute the exponents or make them positive. So I'm gonna go ahead and distribute and then make them positive. So this will be u to the five times negative one third, that's negative five over three. And then v six to the power negative one third, that simply would be six, uh, negative six over three, which is negative two. And then to make them simply positive, you can write this as over one and then just flip them over. So that will be one over u to the five over three and v square. And u and v are different bases, so we can't con continue to combine them. So that will be the final answer. Okay, so for the last example, again, we will simplify this by rewriting the exponents. So the radicals, I'm going to rewrite them as exponents. So we have uh, nine square root of a, well, that will simply be nine a to the power one half times, now cube root of a square, well, that's simply a to the two over three. And then now a's and a's, they're the same, a same base. So I can add their exponent. So since they're multiplying. So in order to add them, I will do the work on the side. So I'm doing two, one half plus two third, adding their exponents, but they're different denominators to so make sure we have same denominators. So we have to have common denominator. So the common denominator would be six. So the first fraction I would multiply by three over three, Second one, I will do two over two to get the six on the denominator. So then that will give me on top three. And for the second fraction, we have four. So all together, that will sum up to seven over six. And that will be the exponent for a. So we have nine a to the power seven over six. And that doesn't simplify any further. We can leave it right here. So there we go, a couple more examples on rational exponents. I hope this makes sense. I will see you next time.